Welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Butterfield. I'm the executive director of the Fred W. Smith National Library for the study of George Washington at Mount Vernon. I'm coming to you from that library, from the Karen Bookwald Wright Reading Room, uh, where I'm joined by a great, great grandson of Jay Gould. Uh, we're going to talk about an important story in the Mount Vernon Ladies Association's history, an important gift granted to them by Jay Gould in 1887 of a plot of land very near the mansion. It's a remarkable story and a remarkable story that reminds us of the interesting story of Mount Vernon long after George Washington's lifetime as the Mount Vernon Ladies Association helped to preserve and ultimately to expand the land that they were able to preserve so that people from around the world can still come to Mount Vernon 365 days a year and visit this special place. I'm joined by Guy Martin, great, great grandson of Jay Gould and Guy's gonna help us to flush out this story. Guy, I am so thrilled that you could join us in the reading room at the library. It's a great pleasure. Um, uh, I've had the privilege of coming here a couple of times and I uh, always find it interesting and, and, and exciting to see what you all are doing. Well, I'm excited to, to dive into this particular story because we spend a lot of time talking about George Washington and, and people around him. This is a story of Jay Gould. And so for a lot of our viewers, they, they, may know, they may know a little bit less about the 19th century than they do the 18th. Can you tell us a little bit about Jay Gould and who he was? Well, uh, Jay Gould, I, I would start by saying, is, is uh, often viewed in history somewhat as a notorious example of the robber baron era. But he was also quietly very generous to both individuals and institutions. Um, Jay was uh, born uh, poor, but of good family, as they would have said <laughs> in those days. And he was the youngest child with five older sisters. So he was, needless to say, spoiled. He was also a somewhat uh, frail, uh, small child, a little bit sickly. And so he escaped work on the farm, which he very much didn't like, and pursued uh, to some degree on his own and to some degree in school, where he actually had some great friendships with teachers. And he learned reading and especially focused on mathematics. He starts out as a surveyor and bookkeeper in the uh, Catskill Mountains of upstate New York, where he was born. And he kind of works his way up. Uh, he does some bookkeeping for tannery. He uh, achieves the uh, partial ownership, partnership in the tannery. He eventually takes over the entire tannery, moves on to another tannery. And over a period of time, uh, he was uh, both an entrepreneur and investor in a range of things. Um, he is remembered most for his role in the fights over the Erie Railroad and also uh, trying to corner the gold market in 1869. But by the end of his life, he is, and it's the time he visits Mount Vernon, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, he really has uh, uh, achieved sort of the peak of his career. He's the owner, uh, executive of really a transcontinental railroad system largely centered on the Union Pacific and the Missouri Pacific. He also owned Western Union and uh, the Manhattan Elevated. Is he one of the richest men in the world at this point? Uh, yes, he is one of the richest men in the world and uh, he uh, was at the same time a very private, uh, rather quiet uh, man his greatest loves in life were family, uh, books, and flowers. Hmm. And uh, so he, uh, you know, was, was a rather quiet private man by and large compared to some of his peers. We're, we're going to be, be focusing in on the year 1887 here in a minute. And just to situate for everyone where this fits into Mount Vernon's story, the Mount Vernon Ladies Association finally takes possession after some negotiations with the, the last uh, Washington family owners of the estate in 1860 is when they take possession. And over the coming years, of course, there's an American Civil War and a growing uh, uh, stability to the to the estate. Uh, it becomes a place of, of tourism for the first time. And people often come to Mount Vernon traveling on a boat down the Potomac uh, and uh, stop uh, to visit this place. And in 1887, Jay Gould and his family were among them. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, Tell us about that visit. 
Well, let me give you just a brief background because one of the interesting questions is why did he come to Mount Vernon? And it's a couple of different things. One is he had just been through a series of Senate hearings, which were actually held in New York on the Western Railroads. And he was frankly exhausted, I think, and decided he should take a vacation. Hmm. And he had uh, finally felt wealthy enough he'd acquired a, a large yacht. Uh, and he basically steamed down the East Coast with all of his family except his eldest son uh, to sort of take a break and do some touring. And he comes up the Potomac River to visit Mount Vernon. Now, uh, a little bit more of history. His, yeah, he is my great grandfather, great great grandfather. His great grandfather fought in the American Revolution and was killed at the Battle of Ridgefield, Connecticut in 1777. Wow. So, uh, and generations were shorter then. So this would have been family lore. Uh, Jay was born in 1836. Uh, there were lots of people still alive who had fought in the Revolutionary War. Hmm. And so he would have grown up with a much closer relationship to the war and to who George Washington was and so on. Um, and there, some of this is, is a little bit family lore, but, and the other things I think were, he was interested in history. He was a great reader. He had a wonderful library in his house. He took actually over an extra sitting room and made the library bigger. Um, and so he comes up the Potomac river and he brings his family and he, I assume had telegraphed ahead to say, I'm coming. And, uh, and I'll let you talk a little bit in a minute about the wonderful character who uh, was the uh, really in charge of, of Mount Vernon. Well, let, let's let me introduce that person then. One of the, the people that Jay Gould and his family would have met uh, was the superintendent, the resident superintendent here at, at Mount Vernon, a man named Harrison Dodge. We could find no pictures of him uh, from roughly this time period when he would have been a much younger man. Uh, he takes over as superintendent of Mount Vernon uh, at the age of uh, 33 in 1885. And so he's uh, roughly in his mid thirties uh, when he meets Jay Gould uh, and is uh, actively in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the estate uh, and, and reporting to the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. Here we see him by the way, with a, a cornerstone that was uh, taken out. It's still, still in the Mount Vernon's collections. Uh, but preserved outside of the house. Uh, this picture was taken, I believe, in the 1930s. So he meets this man who helps to give a private tour to Jay Gould and his family. Uh, and we even have a shot of, of that visit of Jay Gould and his family. And I wonder if we could bring that up. And, and a Guy, can you tell us a little bit about who we're seeing here? Obviously, we see the Mount Vernon estates. Um, can you get, tell us a little bit about yeah, this, uh, this group of folks? This is the, as you can see, it's the family on the uh, right. You have, uh, well, let me start. Jay is the man roughly in the center of the group uh, with his hat off. Um, and immediately to his right uh, is their youngest son, Frank. Uh, to his left, the tallest of the boys is Edwin. The next one is Howard. And then next to little Frank is Mrs. Gould, Helen Miller Gould. And then next to her are Anna in the dark dress and her older sister, Helen, in the light dress. Uh, you can see already, by the way, in this photograph, Helen and Anna had a very special kind of relationship, partly because Anna was one of the younger ones, Helen was one of the older ones, hmm. and I think Helen sort of mothered Anna. But uh, other than the gentleman on the left, we're not sure uh, who he is. Uh, that's the entire family, except for Jay's son, George who was in New York uh, courting uh, his future wife. Well, that's important work too. So here they are in Mount Vernon. It's a, it's a June day. Uh, Harrison Dodge shows them around and he tells them about a particular plot of land very near the estate, actually a stone's throw away, uh, 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 going off in the other direction uh, behind this group uh, and behind the house from what we could see here. Uh, and it's a plot of land that's, uh, that is so close to the mansion that for it to fall into other hands would have been very de uh, detrimental to the Mount Vernon Ladies Association's goals of preserving this estate as Washington would have known it. Uh, 
Uh, so he, this story comes up and Jay Gould uh, steps in and says that he's willing to help. Uh, tell us about this. Well, I, some of this is surmise. And you, you and I have talked about this a little yeah. bit. Um, my sense is that uh, Jay uh, genuinely uh, wanted to help when he heard this story. Hmm. Uh, my other suspicion is that Colonel Dodge, probably being an excellent uh, uh, superintendent, as his official title was, uh, encouraged Jay by saying, look, here's this piece of land. You can get it for this much. And so well, when the so richest much. man in the world, one of the richest yeah. men in the world passes yeah, through, you take your, take your opportunity. I also, uh, I'm an architect, and so I'm fascinated by houses and sites. And I think Jay understood the importance when you have a house on the river, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, of, of keeping that sort of surroundings on the house. Mm. Uh, and uh, so I think he probably genuinely thought this was an important thing to do. It, it, it's just over 30 acres, and you could see a shot of it here that looks like just pasture land, but you, there is a t small glimpse of the river there in right. that image. And you could see uh, uh, this, uh, this map, uh, basically uh, the, the, the right-hand portion of this map uh, includes this plot of land, the Gould Purchase, uh, you can make out the uh, the house and grounds there in the center of this map, really close to the heart of things and, and important to the sight lines to the river. So, uh, yes, the, it, the Jay volunteers, um, they, uh, uh, the colonel uh, conveys his interest on to the ladies uh, who, uh, one of the reasons the colonel gave was that the ladies under their original charter were not, in fact, allowed to purchase land. And uh, so they could receive it as a gift, but couldn't purchase it. So this meant Jay actually would go and buy the land and then uh, donate it, uh, so to speak, give it to the, to the ladies. And uh, he did do that. And, and the library has some uh, documents, uh, both uh, correspondence on both sides, making sort of the arrangements for uh, this to happen. It's very interesting. Kevin was uh, pointing out to me that one of the letters that were signed, were, a number of them were from Helen Gould, uh, mm -hmm. the daughter whom we just introduced. And she had sort of always served as almost her father's personal executive assistant. She was a very bright person and really understood uh, the business and other things. So uh, she would take over in situations like this. So it's not atypical. She in this in this particular moment too, this purchase of land, uh, there's no, uh, Jay Gould is not seeking the spotlight from this. I, I, no. I understand it was actually an, an anonymous donation or he wished it to be. He wished it to be. Um, it, it's it, part of the uh, impact, I would say, of his notoriety was that he appreciated the fact that his name would not necessarily contribute to the prestige of an institution mm. to which he gave something. So he always did it, not in a strictly anonymous way, but just no publicity, nothing to be said about it. Uh, but news leaked out. Uh, in fact, this apparently appeared in the Alexandria papers, I'm sure some sharp reporter went down to the courthouse and saw that Jay Gould had just bought 30 acres and uh, right. wondered what was up. <laughs> our, our archivist, uh, Rebecca Baird, uh, tracked down quite quickly uh, just two weeks later. It was already in the Alexandria newspapers <laughs> uh, identifying Jay Gould as, as the donor uh, in glowing terms. In this case, uh, there was no no appropriate attached, but it was really interesting uh, how quickly this anonymous donation became, became yes. made publicly known. Uh, I wonder, uh, it, you mentioned uh, the the views to the river, and I, and I, I, I want to use this moment to start telling, uh, diving a little bit into that perspective. Um, Jay Gould has an estate or had an estate yes. uh, that, that remains uh, uh, known as, as the Gould Estates uh, in New York on the Hudson River. Could you right. tell us about this place and, well, and try the, to situate it? The house is called Lindhurst, and it has an interesting history. It was built in 1836, which, by the way, is... is uh, in those days, in time terms, that's less than 100 years from when Mount Vernon is started. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, Mount Vernon isn't really complete until the late 1790s. Uh, so this house was uh, that you're seeing in, in photographs was built 
by uh, mayor of New York, William Paulding, in 1836, and added to it somewhat later by its second owner, a uh, gentleman named Merrick. Uh, Merrick built a large greenhouse, and that is probably one of the things that attracted Jay to this house. Mm. Uh, the greenhouse sadly burned down, and he replaced it with an even better one, but that's a side story. What you do see here is this house has this, uh, as you can sort of wrap around veranda, where you could sit and uh, read and look out over the Hudson River at, at the Tappan Zee. And uh, I'm, you know, particularly in the days of pre air conditioning, this was a lovely place and a lovely way to spend a summer. As the piazza at Mount Vernon would have been. Exactly. And so that's one of the things, again, that has struck me is that the, the notion of the piazza looking out over the river, and here you see on the left Mount Vernon in its view of the river, and on the right is Lyndhurst in its view of the Hudson. Uh, so they're similarly situated houses of roughly a century apart, but still uh, I think there are some common elements of how they're sited and, and used. Uh, at that time. And Gould, Gould would have uh, perhaps had a sense of, of how important the waterfront uh, territory adjacent to the home would be. Yes, and, and the view, I mean, it, his house is, you can sort of see in the photographs, protected. Uh, remember that in the photograph on the left, until the Gould purchase was made, the property line was not far out of that photograph, sort right. of along the back of the, the orangery greenhouse and and you know right down through there uh so i think that would be a thing that he was probably also thinking about as uh, as, as part of what uh, this uh, to him significant uh you know place would have meant i did i did uh learn quite recently uh guy and i, I don't know that i even had a chance to uh, tell you this in advance that the land that, that was up for sale was owned still by Washington descendants. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, un, un, as we know, the Mount Vernon Ladies Association had purchased the main uh, portion of the estate from descendants of Washington, uh, John Augustine Washington III. Uh, one of his descendants uh, owned that plot of land off to the side and an, uh, in, a, in a somewhat scary uh, uh, moment uh, was uh, considering putting up for sale to the highest bidder and thankfully Jay Gould stepped in. Uh, so there's the story goes on a bit too because the uh, with this gift of land um, the the Gould family their visit to Mount Vernon is is has makes its mark on history. Uh, some years later, um, Jay Gould uh, uh, comes to his end in 1892, and we have documents in our archives that that uh, explore how the Mount Vernon Ladies Association responded to this. Could you tell us about Jay Gould's final years and uh, yep. take us up to this time? Uh not long after uh, he had visited Mount Vernon, one of the interesting uh, things was that he, in fact, uh, was discovered to have tuberculosis, which mm. was at that time incurable. Uh, however, being a very private and somewhat secretive man, no one was told, uh, especially his wife. He was, uh, she was of what they used to call a nervous nature and would often go into bouts of and he didn't want to upset her. Uh, so he quiets down uh, in, in his life quite a bit. He spends more time in, in, uh, in his house at, at Lyndhurst. Uh, he did make one trip with the whole family to Europe and, and uh, then he pretty much stays in New York. Uh, he has a townhouse in town. He uses the yacht largely for commuting up and down the river. He too had a dock on the river, by the way, just like Mount Vernon. So yeah. he could uh, leave his house and get down to Wall Street in uh, about an hour, which even today would be an accomplishment. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, he slowly uh, gets sicker, essentially. Mm. Uh, his wife does predecease him, and that uh, further. Uh, I don't know how you'd say it almost damaged his will to live. I mean, I think that was a, a, a tremendous blow to him. They had been very, very close and they raised all his family. And he dies in New York uh, and he's buried outside New York in a mausoleum and 
Woodlawn Cemetery. Hmm. Uh, and Lyndhurst stays in the family. Um, his daughter, Helen, whom I mentioned earlier, was sort of his uh, person. And here you can see, actually, it's the correspondence on the screen is, is again, addressed to Miss Helen Gould. She stays in the house. She eventually marries at a very late age. Uh, she adopts some children. Uh, and uh, when she dies, she gives the house to her uh, youngest sister, Anna, whom you saw in the photograph. Oh, wow. And Anna, in turn, uh, gives it to the National Trust, which is the current ownership of Lindhurst. Wow. So, so people can go visit it today? Yes, you can go visit Lindhurst. It's uh, very much there. And, uh, in this particular letter, uh, which we have both uh, in manuscript in our Mount Vernon Ladies Association archives, and here you're seeing a shot of the minutes of the of the M MBLA for that year. Uh, they're writing to Miss Helen Gould, uh, thanking her for uh, her for the the important gift of her father. Uh, there's a phrase in there. Uh, they 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 acknowledge the patriotic and delicate spirit with which Mr. Gould donated this tract of land. Uh, patriotic and delicate spirit. I like that phrase a lot. Uh, but so Helen Gould is uh, plays a prominent role in, in sort of managing the family at this point. Yes. And she also she really led the uh, philanthropic efforts. family. She was very, very uh, keen on philanthropy and uh, encouraged Jay to make some initial gifts to New York University, to which she added a, a great deal out of her share uh, of the estate. And um, She's, you know, well remembered within and without the family. It's probably being uh, the most charitable and, and giving uh, person in the family. Well, this is uh, one of the things that brought us to, together, Guy, and to, to have this conversation. We want, decided we wanted to share this conversation with with everyone out there uh, that could tune in. Uh, is that the, many of the, of the descendants of, of this family, uh, and in fact, at, at some point, uh, perhaps we'll bring the family photo up again from 1887 because I love that so much. Um, but it, many of the descendants of the family remain in the area or are scattered around, of course, and have, have come together on occasion. Yes, no, I think that uh, we, we are a pretty close family. Um, I have came out here today to cheer me on a bunch of cousins. Uh, many of whom live in Maryland. Um, uh, I live here in, in Washington, D.C., and then we have quite a few uh, cousins in upstate New York, and mm. then others spread all across the country to Oregon and uh, Colorado and Idaho. And so we're, as happens with American families, we're pretty spread out now yeah. and uh, have a lot of different perspectives. Well, it's been wonderful to bring you uh, to the library. In fact, uh, uh, one of the things that you and, and some of your uh, fellow Jay Gould descendants uh, have been uh, interested in doing is helping us to to purchase some books that help us to recreate George Washington's library, not books that Washington owned, but identical uh, printings and copies of those books. That's been a really exciting uh, converse, uh, conversations, building up to occasional discoveries and purchases. So thank you oh, so much for your yeah, ongoing it's been, engagement. It's been a, a lot of fun. And, and I have to commend Charles Tharp also for, he really sort of brought me into this. And, and uh, it was uh, my, my first purchase, so to speak, or gift was uh, sadly a timely book about the yellow fever epidemic in Philadelphia. Uh, where George and Martha Washington were there. And uh, I guess they wanted to have some sad record of what had happened. So well, this is this book. a remarkable uh, uh, book. And, and thank you for that gift. It's actually something we discovered quite recently uh, was uh, a request of Martha Washington for a purchase and, and, and George acquired it uh, for her. Um, th thank you so much for, for joining us for this conversation. Jeanette, as we, I, I wonder if we could bring up that image of the family and, and the Mount Vernon grounds. Uh, it's such a, a great shot. And, uh, and Guy, since I have you here, could you just tell us uh, where you fit into this picture? Ah, the, the, the curious thing is, in a sense, I don't. I am the great-grandson of George, the oldest boy who is not in the photograph because he was uh, too busy pursuing his her future wife, <laughs> my great grandmother. Uh, so uh, 
uh, my direct ancestry isn't in the photograph, but it's uh, still a, a great fun to, to see the photograph and uh, uh, see uh, also a total aside, but an architecture geek, uh, that side porch, which obviously was not original, was finally removed. I'd forgotten when. There, there is a bit about this image that uh, it, we, it does not date back uh, to the year uh, 1799, which right. is the year at which we try to uh, preserve right, yeah. and, and re restore the house. Uh, so that, uh, it, as an architect, you, it jumped out to you. And I, I notice, I, I'll bet you can notice two or three features that no longer <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, exist on the house. But that's a, a big part of what we've done in Mount Vernon. In fact, when you pass through later today, uh, you'll see a, a new wallpapering of the central passage at the core of the house uh, to help bring it back to something that we believe it looked like in 1799. Uh, we continue to make those discoveries. Very excited to show them off to people like you. It's great fun. Well, thank you, Guy. Uh, thank you to, to uh, Jay Gould and all of his descendants for all that they've done for Mount Vernon over the years. Uh, this plot of land is something uh, that is uh, still owned by the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, still put to great use, not simply in protecting the, si the sight lines uh, to the river, but it actually remains as pasture land. Uh, you can, if you go there now, you will see some red Devon cattle uh, grazing on that pasture. Uh, thank you, guys. It's been a wonderful conversation. Well, thank you, Kevin. It's been great. Thank you to all of you. Join us again for future live streams as we continue to explore not just the history of George Washington, but also the history of this marvelous estate and the Mount Vernon Ladies Association that has preserved it. Thank you so much and have a wonderful afternoon.